I chose to learn about a library called Framer Motion, which is an open source React library to power production ready animations. So the tagline they give, essentially it automatically generates natural animations from props it receives to any React component. And what it boils down to is it can convert any HTML or SVG element into something that gets animated eventually in the browser. So to show some examples, uh, if you start off, if you just had a div wrapping an icon, uh, there's no real, I guess, interactivity inside of this. Um, but after importing motion from Framer Motion, you can take that exact same div, um, modify it into a motion div, uh, which just calls uh, motions APIs underneath the hood in this library, and then apply props like animating um, specific properties. If we want to animate the X property or where its X position is on the screen, we just tell it where we want it to end up and then can apply a transition prop um, with different options like how long the animation will last and easing functions for how it will look. And Framer will actually apply defaults in addition to these that will make the animation look more fluid and more natural. So if I save this, then you can see the animation actually happens like that. <clears throat> I still have the other div showing, so I'll save that and remove it. Um, but each time I replay that div, you kind of see a natural ease occur, even though we didn't apply any. And more advanced example would be um, connecting animations with multiple children of a div. So in this example, uh, we have this container element here with child elements inside of it that will be opened up when we click this button. So by adding a prop is open to this div, we can alter the state and then uh, rotate the button when we click is open and it's set, and then stagger the animation of the children after it's open uh, to show all the child elements, which are different arrow icons. So when I click the button, you see this button rotates based on the state of the prop we're giving it, and the other buttons appear. That same um, staggering of the children can happen in reverse by providing additional options to reverse that. Um, so you can see the same thing happen backwards. Rather than opening up in that order, they can close in the opposite direction. Another simple example is adding a loading button. If you just have a simple icon wrapped by a div, you can apply a transition to yo-yo or continue repeating the animation um, up to infinity and then animate between an initial position and an eventual animated position. In this case, scaling the button down and increasing the opacity each time, as you can tell right there. One last animation would just be a a simple button. You can add gesture props that, <clears throat> while hovering or tapping on an element, apply different properties. In this case, when we hover over this play button icon, the button will scale 1.15 times, and then when we tap on the button, it will be pressed down or shrink. You can see how that looks like this. <clears throat> 